Welcome back to Hike Oregon. Thank you so much for watching part two of the Hiking in Winter series. If you didn't watch the first video in the series, I recommend pausing this and watching that now. It's all about winter hiking clothes and what you should and shouldn't be wearing, as well as hiking shoes and that kind of thing. So in today's video, we will be talking about a few different things. First, how to find a winter hike. Second, how to safely get to the trail. And a few things to keep in mind while you're doing your winter hike. Finding a winter hike can be a little bit difficult just because unless you live somewhere where you can visibly see the mountains, you may not really know where the snow level is. Is it at 4,000 feet? Is it at 3,000 feet? Is it down to 1,500 feet? Places like Eugene, for example, we're at 495 feet elevation, and we see some hills from the town, which are, uh, I would say, maybe 1,000 feet, maybe 1,500. Um, so obviously, if there's snow on those hills, we know, okay, there's snow down to about 1,500 feet. But after that, I can't really see or tell where the snow is. Here are some options for you, especially if you live in Oregon. You can go to ODOT. It is super handy and you can see the trip cameras. So they have road cameras on the major thoroughways and you can see exactly the current weather. So you can see actually if it's snowing, if it's raining, if it has been snowing, how much snow, that kind of thing. These cameras aren't everywhere, which makes it kind of difficult. So there are some other tools you can use besides ODOT trip check. You can always also just call the ranger station that is near where you would like to go hiking. They are open five days a week. So just make sure to not call on a Saturday because they won't be open but call anytime during the week and they will most likely know if the trail you're headed to is completely snowed in. And another option that I actually use a lot is just checking Instagram. Tons and tons and tons of people show their hikes on Instagram and they will usually tag the location. So let's say you're headed to Crater Lake. Just search in Instagram Crater Lake. You can also do this with Facebook, but you can search Crater Lake and then the most recent posts will come up. If you see there's a post from two days ago and there's like 10 feet of snow, you'll know there's 10 feet of snow. Or sometimes you can message the person, ask about trail conditions, that kind of thing. So that is super handy and I've actually used that a lot. Again, you can do the same thing with Facebook, just type in the search, the place you're going, and most likely someone will have been there recently. Now, sometimes this does not work if the hike is a little more remote and not as many people go on it, then it's a little bit harder. And then I would just basically rely on your common sense. Check the trip cam, call the ranger station, kind of get a feel of where the snow level is. And then if you're hiking there, you should know at what elevation the trail starts and if it starts at where they say the snow is there will be snow you just use common sense in that regard but if you are going to one of the more popular trails most likely you'll be able to find a source that has been there recently and that will give you an accurate trail report you can also go to my website hikeoregon.net as well as the Hike Oregon Facebook page, I do my best to notify people when the snow levels change. And you can always email me, I will most likely know where the snow is. The next thing I wanted to talk about is getting to the trail. Getting to the trail is usually not hard. I just wanted to remind you all to keep certain things in your car. There have been times where I have gotten stuck in the snow because I didn't know where the snow level was and I just drove right into the snow 
and wasn't prepared at all. So I do not want that to happen to you. So here are some things to keep in mind. Always carry chains in your car unless you have studded tires put on your car for winter, then you don't need chains. But if you do not have winter tires, you need to carry chains. Other than chains, it is important to make sure, I mean, if you're hiking in the winter, you will hopefully have gloves because that is one of the things I talk about. You will have gloves in your backpack, but it is important to have waterproof gloves. So especially when you're putting on chains, your hands get really, really cold and wet. So you might want to have gloves for that. Also, make sure to carry a shovel in your car, whether it be a small, you know, compact shovel, something that you can fold up, put under your seat or something, but a shovel is super, super, super important. If you get stuck in any sort of snow and your wheels are just spinning and spinning, you will need that shovel to get the snow away from the wheels. Another really handy thing, although most people probably won't carry this in their car, but another really handy thing to have is cat litter. Cat litter, again, in that situation where you're creating that really slushy track because your tire has just been spinning and spinning, cat litter will help that so much. So even if you just carry like a little five pound container of cat litter in your car, it will be a lifesaver if you're in that situation. And trust me, almost once a year I'm in that situation. So, <laughs> so to reiterate, please carry chains or traction tires, shovel, and cat litter if you can. The next thing I wanted to talk about are some things to keep in mind during your winter hike. You have limited daylight hours. So when you are choosing a hike, make sure you're choosing something appropriate. Just because you can do 12 to 15 mile hikes in the summer, doesn't mean you'll be able to do that in the winter necessarily. Again, you have limited daylight hours. So currently we have sunrise of 7.30 a.m. and sunset at 4.30 p.m. Another thing to keep in mind when hiking during the winter is different types of food. So in the summer, I tend to carry a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, maybe a fresh sandwich, you know, maybe some gummy snacks or something like that. Very refreshing stuff. In the winter, I am almost always cold when I am not actively hiking. So let's say I stop for lunch or a little break, I get cold really easily. It doesn't matter how many clothes I'm wearing, I will be cold. So my body uses a lot of energy to keep itself warm during those cold weather days when I'm hiking. So I tend to carry food that will fuel my body and help keep me warm. A lot of things like nuts are really high in calories and even just a small handful will fuel me and my body can easily keep me warm at that point. Another thing is I like to carry a thermos full of soup, even though it's a little heavier, but on a winter day hike, you're usually not doing more than like eight miles. So for an eight mile hike, you know, it's fun to carry a soup, maybe some bread to dunk in the soup, that kind of thing. Just something to warm your body from the inside out, which is really nice. It feels really nice to have that warm soup. Another thing I do is I often carry like half of a mountain house meal or something like that, and I actually take my stove and my pot and I will cook on the trail, which it's super quick and easy, and again, I have a warm meal in my belly. Another thing to keep in mind if you are hiking in freezing conditions and you do have a water bladder in your backpack with a hose, the hose can easily freeze. So a trick I have for that actually is to put warm water in the bladder. So you, you're starting off with warm water. Granted, it does get cold pretty fast because the bladder is not insulated or anything like that. But again, the bladder is in your backpack, so it does stay warm for a few hours. And then the hose won't freeze as easily because it is warm water going through. Obviously another trick is just drink pretty often and then the hose won't have time to freeze. And last but not least, I just wanted to say that it is always a good idea to have a backup hike in mind that is at a lower elevation than the hike you wanted to do. I especially do this in the early parts of winter and the late parts of spring when I am unsure of snow levels in certain areas. Just because there isn't snow 
at Sanium Pass anymore doesn't mean there won't be snow a couple miles east at the same elevation. A lot of the snowfall depends on different watersheds, different north, south, east, west locations. Um, it's not always elevation. So keep that in mind and always have a backup plan. I know it really sucks to drive like an hour and a half and then get there and you can't hike because there's too much snow or you can't even get to the trailhead because it's blocked by too much snow and then you're stuck and you have no backup plan, you have no phone service or anything and you're just annoyed and it sucks. So always have a backup hike in mind or take your guidebook, maybe you'll find something in there, but just in the back of your head it's always good to have a backup hike in mind. So yes, even though it does get cold here in Oregon, Oregon does have a lot of hikes that are available in the winter season. I especially really love the coast in the winter. There are a ton of hikes by the coast that don't ever see snow. Again, go to my website if you need ideas on hikes that aren't going to be covered in snow. I have a few options and I'm actually going to be editing one of those options here soon with new ideas. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for the third winter hiking video. It's going to be all about snowshoes now that I've talked about what to wear, how to go. Now if you do want to hike in the snow, I will be talking all about snowshoes and how to facilitate going and hiking in the snow. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next adventure.